Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and normally on this channel we do talk a lot about space and various discoveries in regards to space, but mostly because it helps us understand the life around us and helps us understand how the universe works. Although sometimes to try to understand how things work around us, and of course trying to understand ourselves better, we do have to return back to planet Earth and try to discover how things work here as well. And specifically today we're going to be talking about the idea of laughter understanding its origins, understanding why we laugh, and more importantly, trying to understand, do other animals laugh as well? Is this something that's common to many species, or is this uniquely a human experience? And although I think most of us are aware that laughter in general is a universal human experience, no matter where you're from or what culture you have, laughter is generally perceived in a very similar way. At the same time, to try to understand human laughter, we do have to take a look at other animals and other species as well. But I guess the first question is, well, why do we laugh to begin with? What is this phenomenon of laughter? Well, evolutionary speaking, the scientists mostly believe that this is to provide information to people around us, essentially telling them that either we're having fun or that we want them to join in the fun. Or in more scientific terms, it's a kind of a vocal signal to initiate play with others. Very similar to the signal that this dog is showing us as well. And so this play initiation signal is something that many social animals have to basically show the animals around them that they're not dangerous and that you're not in trouble or in danger from them. But although animals like dogs do have these visual signals, these are not necessarily laughter because by definition laughter has to have some sort of a vocal representation, it has to have some sort of a sound or some kind of a rhythmical motion. And though generally I guess you can argue that there's a lot of visual representation as well, normally we can kind of tell it just from the picture alone if a person is laughing, if we only use the visual representation of laughter by definition, then in that sense we're not actually going to find a lot of species out there having a very similar display. However, if we consider laughter to also have this vocal element, suddenly this opens up a lot of different species that seem to display very similar patterns. Which is pretty much exactly what this paper right here discovered by analyzing something like 65 different species of animals. And as you can probably imagine, what they discovered is that humans are not the only animals to laugh. Many animals seem to do it as well, but in slightly different manners. And so here they managed to discover quite a lot of different animals. Now obviously a lot of great apes, a lot of monkeys and a lot of primates in general display what we would call laughter, which often even sounds like human laughter. But surprisingly they've also discovered a lot of other species essentially having their own version of different types of vocal laughter as well. And so here we obviously have dogs, different species of mongoose, especially the ones that are more social and often live in bigger groups, different types of seals and animals similar to seals, pretty much all types of foxes. And this one was a bit of a surprise for me personally, but cows tend to laugh as well, with the surprise itself being the fact that there is a cheese that I really like called the laughing cow. Which really makes me wonder if the company behind this cheese actually knew something that the researchers didn't know before. And also some of these social birds as well, specifically birds like magpies, which are often extremely intelligent to begin with. And what's super interesting here is that a lot of these animals are separated by millions of years of evolution, and every one of these animals developed a very similar response to these social situations. And pretty much in every case, in every single animal they looked at, the idea of laughter was always associated with this play-like behavior that often results in, well, I guess you can call it a kind of a fight. But in order for this play fight not to get too aggressive, this is when the laughter comes in play. The animals make sure to announce that they're about to fight, but it's going to be a play fight. And although a lot of animals like primates and dogs also have the visual representation, so they'll have a play face, in dogs usually it's by, for example, bowing their head and wagging their tail, in some animals like birds it's really just the sounds themselves. And because of this it was really challenging for the scientists to collect this data, and they also were specifically looking for these patterns that would indicate rhythmical panting behavior, basically breathing really fast and repeatedly. And because some animals were displaying very quiet panting sounds, it was actually challenging to discover all of these 65 species. Although obviously by studying other species, we can definitely learn to understand the evolution of human laughter and its purpose in the social behavior of our species. 
And the scientists in this paper also, to some extent, discover the evolutionary process here as well. At least for humans and possibly for most of the other animals like primates and dogs. Since in many different species, laughter seems to manifest itself as a kind of a rhythmical panting behavior, to the scientists in this paper, this actually explains its origins. Laughter in this case very likely evolved as a kind of a cue during an extremely intensive play or some sort of a play fight when we start breathing simply because we're tired. Which seems to be the case for many other species as well. Because a lot of the play fighting results in heavy breathing, this heavy breathing then starts to produce certain sounds. And that by itself is what laughter is. Or at least it was originally. Now laughter is a lot more complex. First of all, it does serve as a cue to initiate play, but in humans it also serves a lot of other purposes as well. Obviously we laugh when we experience happiness, but we also laugh when we're nervous, when we're surprised, or when we're confused. So the laughter of human beings is definitely a little bit more complex than just play fight. But despite the complexity of laughter in humans, it still is a really simple phenomenon that many other animals seem to recognize as well. For example, laughing to your dog will often initiate a somewhat similar response from your dog as well. They'll understand that you're about to initiate play. And so in that sense, laughter is contagious and also seems to be contagious between species. But obviously not all species. Some species might not care for human laughter because their sounds are very different. Now in terms of the discovery of those 65 species, you can find the entire list in the paper in the description below, which also tells you what sort of laughter these animals experience and provide all of the known observations for pretty much all of these animals in the list. Although funnily enough, cats as always are the strange ones. Because they also laugh, but they don't laugh when they play. They seem to laugh for some other unknown reasons and their laughter is essentially a bunch of hisses. Which probably just means that they're not laughing with us, they're laughing at us which would be a typical cat thing to do. Anyway, you can learn more about this from the paper in the description. And so, in a nutshell, what does this study tell us? Well, it tells us that many different mammals, many different animals, develop the idea of laughter independently from one another, simply through various social interactions. And though human laughter is the most complex, other animals seem to display a lot of complexity as well. Usually, though, it's not necessarily visual. In most cases, it seems to be vocal or based on sounds. And for the most part, it is really related to announcing to others that they're not really being serious about, for example, a fight. That is just a play fight. And chances are that it's not just those 65 species that have this type of behavior. A lot of social species very likely display this, especially if they have the idea of play fighting. And so I'm sure in the next few years, scientists will discover even more unusual animals that tend to laugh as well. Something that right now we can't even imagine. And so on that note, I guess for now that's kind of all we know. Laughter is definitely really complex in humans, but it also seems to be a universal experience for social animals. And by the way, in case you ever wanted to study laughter professionally, the science itself is known as gelatology. That's the science of laughter and humor. And that's the science that essentially tries to discover various psychological and physiological effects of laughter in human beings, but also in other species. On that note, check out the paper in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves to learn about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description, and maybe just come back tomorrow, stay wonderful, and as always, bye bye. What is this cat up to? It really looks like it's up to something.